hello guys in this video we shall be passing through how to import um content or records uh, using a goodbye csv with laravel and vjs let's dive right in so first things first i'll go and install laravel here and i'll pick a composer so i'll give my project a name uh, let me say um goodbye goodbye csv this is going to be the name of our project by slash csv so we shall do this and it will import as you can see we shall see D into our application by csv and after doing that we shall then go go ahead and install the goodbye csv package how do you go and you look for it here in the google goodbye csv package after doing this this is a package so we shall then go ahead and install it um, like this. <coughs> so we'll copy this. Sorry about my cough. So we'll copy this command or this line and paste. Then you create a terminal. Yeah, as you can see, the terminal is here. And I will say php at sun. php at sun. Yep. So this that and um as you can see we have this and um since we are using Vite we are supposed to run npm run dev too. So it is actually saying there is no Vite command so that means we have not installed the package yet so we're saying npm install Yep so after doing that then we shall go to our composer JSON um then we go to the require and I'll say comma put something like this. So this is the goodbye. And as you can see, um, this is what we shall do. So we have now installed the npm. Um, we have run the command of npm install so that it can actually run um, the vite a vite library into our project so now we are going to run composer update so that it includes um, the goodbye csv completed um we shall dive right into our code as you can see it has now added um the composer um and i'm going to show we have the goodbye csv package in our project so um we shall then run in game run dev as you can see it is going to run the void because now it is available in our project so we shall go ahead and open this terminal so that we see this and um this is what we shall see so this is going to be our default level project and um uh, right now i'm going to just use this welcome page so that i can do everything as you can see and um so that we can achieve what we want very fast um let me give an example of something like i'm trying to make a model php and sign of um, a text in record so um, let's say I'm going to add a migration and I'm going to add a resource so minus MR actually means that we are adding a migration and the R means that we are adding a controller with some code in it so when we run that it will auto generate everything for you and as you can see we have the model that is called the record as you can see and we have the controller that is called a record controller yes record controller and it has a migration also so it's just one command and generates most of the um, um, things for you so as you can see we have two migrations and uh, as you can see we have the records migration so what we are trying to import here is going to be something simple since um, I'm actually first going to do it through um, that normal Laravel thing and then I'll add the VJS in my code. So um, now um, we shall, you know, add the fillable, protected fillable. You can see it's because we are trying to, you know, put in values that are going to be filled into our project. Let's say I'm actually taking the name of the record. Name. Let's say uh, I'm trying to take the name of the record. Name of the record and take um date um, then take um the batch number of the record yeah, and then uh, take um the selling price of the record 
I take the buying price on the record something like that so I will do this and then I'll put the same information here so as you go here we shall do the same we shall add something like this uh, let me just paste in my comments and comment them here so I'll say string name and terminate and then say table with a batch number and say still string I love using strings because you know they don't consume much memory and um, I will go ahead and say table string no 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 actually I will just say integer or float something like that say float I'll say float for that because we are dealing with money selling price and now I'll add another float with we'll buying price Load of buying price. Buying price. Oh, we can as well go for the integer since this is just an example and this is not where we are focusing on lately. Yeah, so we mainly focusing on our package and putting data into our database. So after doing this, um, we shall then run PHP at some migrate. So as you can see, I have um, three terminals. You can see here. You see PHP at Sun Migrate. Yeah. So what is it saying now? It is actually saying um, um, connection refused. That means we have not yet configured our database with our application. So as you can see, if you get such an error, you go to the env file and you try to change the database name to the name that you are going to create in the database. So let me give it a goodbye CSV package by csv package yeah and this is the tab and i'm opening a local host and i'm um, opening a local host is actually telling me the server is not there so i'll do one first turn on the example whatever you're using as your apache server so me i'm using manager os x and um i'll start the server <coughs> After starting the server, we shall wait for it to say it is running. So, as you can see, it has told us that it is running. So, by the time you go back to these ends, it is actually giving you the local host. So, we shall give it the name of the database. As you can see, I'm going to call it by CSV as I named it. You create this, and then you go back to our terminal and you know run the same command PHP at sun. So after running a migration as you can see so when you go back to the database it is actually going to show you this some tables have been imported and as you can see when you click into our database um, there are migrations as you can see here there are failed jobs migrations password resets records users and now since you're trying to you know testing it is actually here down so go to our routes and then this is a page so as you can see this is the page and um, this is the same page we are going to actually use to you know put our ui so that the ui puts the data to the database so at the moment i'm going to just write um, route and um, say this is going to be posting data i'll say a command something like import records import records and say comma then put up and say HTTP and say controllers and add class and add a method that is supposed to be there controllers and um, the name of the controller and add function name so what's the function name let's say I'm going to say it is called input records so this is going to be a function name and it is actually complaining like this because there is no function called input records in uh, record controller so we shall go into the record controller and we add something related to input so what you do you write public function public function input 
of records. So since we are importing, we are going to be receiving a request. And uh, since we are, <coughs> we are sending a request of CSV, um, we shall put a MIME that actually requires people to actually be sending in the CSV into our database. So we shall first validate it. And this is how we write validate. Validate and pass in the request of the first parameter and say comma and array and put a csv so csv is going to be the name of the file that we are using and um we shall then put um um mines um, so what are we dealing with we are dealing with a file so let's say mines it's a csv so after doing that um we shall first try catch i like using try and catch because you know you get to know the errors before you know you actually you know, uh, continue uh, doing everything as you're supposed to return uh, redirect back i'm going to add the view uh, with and you see this is going to be an error at times uh, I like returning this plus putting a status code it's 500 and we shall say hey I'll pass an error to get message so that means it is returning the error that is you know gotten by you gotten after trying to import if you import something and it fails then the error will return as the message as you can see here it will turn this in our response and our get message is the real error you have returned after failing to import the data into the database so uh, i'll then go ahead and um and and first die dump i'll die dump and say request file says it is a file and say csv So this is supposed to return um, data that is um, dumped before we actually get the real results. And um, what we are going to do, we shall first design the UI. And after designing the UI, we shall go ahead and show everything. So what we are going to do, we are going to clean everything in the welcome page. And um, after cleaning everything in the welcome page, we are going to change everything and. Um, and put a file that imports to the database a form actually so um, as you can see we have this I don't think we need this um, let's remove this or oh, let's comment you yeah, can actually comment you know and um, we can do this also we can comment this to also and um, after doing that, uh, we can do commenting for this too. So after doing that, um, so we shall go to Bootstrap. So Bootstrap. So Bootstrap, and um, you know, pick something that is related to the documentation. Yeah, so this is how bootstraps looks like at the moment. It's actually working right now. So we shall go to the examples and look for a form components. <laughs> I want to components. Let me see the docs. Mm, looking for components so this is where it is so we shall look for the components and um i actually wanted a form so i'm going to search form so this is the first form so i'll just copy after pasting it in my code this
Let me check what's actually here. Yeah, that we shall refresh. So it is actually saying um, undefined constant import records. Oh, so it looks like I made an error here. Oh, okay. This is supposed to be um, quotes. That is supposed to be in quotes. Okay, I think um, that is a silly mistake you shouldn't make. So it is supposed to be in quotes. Something like that. So I think that now works fine. Um, let's look for this. Um, the form will be looking like, and um, after changing the color, um, we shall then go ahead and remove. Um, we shall then go ahead and remove uh, um, password. We shall remove the check me out. And uh, we shall leave, uh, I think it's two. Yeah. We shall leave this two. So for this, we, we need an input type of a file. Then, um, we can give it a form as control. We can remove this as well. And, um, Let's see how it looks like. So you refresh here. And as you can see, it is now left with this only. Where you actually select any kind of file. Um, you can see when you click it, it selects. So let's remove also this. And uh, let, let me just put uh, something related to upload CSV files. Or uh, you, you can as well force um, you can as well force input type to only choose CSV files just like that. Accept dot CSV files, something related to that. And um, you can leave a submit button. Uh, you can as well add um, add CSF. That's the token we need to submit. You can as well add um, uh, action method. And what is going to be the method? Remember, the method is going to be the post method, as you saw. And um, uh, what else are we going to focus on? Since this is going to be a file, so we shall, we shall input in uh, int type multi part. multipart slash form data so this actually means that uh, we actually you know posting uh, something that is um, related to data and it is supposed to be encrypted so here as our point of action we shall use um, this as our URL so we copy this let's see then I come to a folder where there is a form and uh, this is the thing so we shall put in our action here simple as that <coughs> so after doing this um, let's first remove this and this so our file input our input actually accepts only csv files and now let's see if that also works so as you can see it is not selecting it is actually selecting only the csvs you cannot select anything that is not a csv so it actually worked so we now go ahead and um, choose this since we are just testing so we chose that and um, we are going to submit but remember what we said um, we are just tied up with all the data we are getting from here yes so we shall then submit 
let's submit and see what we get um it is actually saying null uh, line 29 so let's go and figure that out also <coughs> line 29 so come here to our controller it's actually saying null so we did not give this file a name called csv that's why you see it is actually complaining so let's go back here and I'll give it a name csv and save after saving we shall go back here and then try to refresh refresh after doing that refreshment uh, we shall pull our csv again and then let's try to upload and see yeah so as you can see this is a kind of a file we have as you can see this is a file name and um, this is more information we have that is uh, chosen so <coughs> Um, as you can see it is telling it is a file and it is a CSV file the main type is a CSV file so let's go ahead and do the method for implementation to actually export everything to the database so um, after doing that and confirming that it actually works we shall then go to our record controller and um, try to you know uh, in the implementation of um, to, the, the, to do the implementation of <coughs> the goodbye CV so let's go back to the documentation of you know, people use um, to import to the database um, so we shall start with um, this as you can see and um, we shall import these classes as you can see up here so we shall go to our code and um, put this out here our controllers then um, we shall go back and um, introduce this also copy this then I come here, paste the code, after doing this, shall then um, um, add an observer to execute all the values that we are getting from the CSV so we shall do this still let's organize our code <coughs> Since we receive a lot of data from the, um, the CSV, it um, it actually comes as an array. So we shall be iterating through each and every column. I will first tie down still, and I'm show you how things work. Let's tie down the columns, and um, let's call this a request. Best file, best file that is a CSV, the name CSV. So we terminate this. 
this is supposed to return all the columns from here you on know, our CSV. We are not doing any importation. We are just tight dumping all the values here. Or you can as well decide to, you know, but when you return, it is going to actually run one row and it stops. It's the same thing here. Let's try and do a file dump. Let's try and do that and see how many rows it can return. Yes. So I am actually testing it with a value that is not supposed to be, you know, entered in the database, but we are trying to test whether, you know, data goes into so can import again and um, this is supposed to uh, import the file let me see so when we do this um, as you can see it has actually returned all as you can see it's it's importing all now what's what's in my csv yeah you see this this information that is from india and this other information as you can see it is saying um, i'm actually having a product id a product name and a pack size and um unopened packs so this is the kind of csv i'm dealing with so this is the kind of information I have in my CSV and um, we are going to try to kind of match the information we are getting from this to the information that is supposed to be added in the database. How do you match that kind of information? So let's go back to our controller. Uh, let's refresh here. So after refreshing, um, we shall then go here and um, um, say records <coughs> records create so it is supposed to be record if I'm going sure yeah it's supposed to be that and yeah, what do we have in the record model in the record model we actually have uh, this This is where I put all the information. So we have actually two, three, four, five. Actually, we have five columns. So I'm going to create a CSV with five columns so that you know I put this kind of data into the database, as you can see. So we put this and then we say it is a column at a certain index since uh, all these columns have certain indexes as you can see as you saw recently every value belong to a certain index um, let me try to go back and show you what I'm trying to mean so let me go down my information and uh, try to pass in the columns I do that and um, again try what I've done recently. I will import and when I import yeah, this is what you see. So as you can see it is actually telling me what is at index 0 is product ID and what is at index 1 is product name what is at index 2 is back size just as you see here so you have to match everything as seen yep so let's now go back since you have you know seen what is at index 1 and index 0 so it's the same thing I'm supposed to do here but I don't have a CSV file with um, that kind of column so I would say Whatever I'll put at uh, index 0 will be the name, and whatever I'll put at uh, column, column uh, 1 will be the date, and whatever I'll put at column, columns, 
at index 2 will be the batch number and whatever output at column 3 columns 3 and the prime price columns 4 yep so um, this actually means that uh, whatever record I create the name will be at index 0, the date will be at index 1, the batch number will be at index 2, then the selling price and um, the buying price will be in this order. So let me go ahead and create a file. Let me pause and go and create a file with a lot of information so that we can test. As you can see, this is the file, and um, what we have at index 0 is the name. And um, Yes, uh, I had actually made a mistake. Um, I had included an, a date, but I am not actually using it, so I'll be deleting it for now because I'm not having it in the database. So I'll be using name, batch number, buying price, and selling price for now. Um, it is actually um, it is actually not posting anything at the moment. Oh. So, why? So it is this, and um, it's actually telling me that um, redirect response three zero two. So let's try to clear Kachi and um, see if things work perfectly. Let's uh, optimize. So after doing that, uh, we shall try again and see if our things actually work. Demo. Submit. Submitting. Response. So it is actually telling me that we are getting a redirect response. And um, let's try this again in Chrome. And we get a clear error. So let's open up Chrome. I don't usually use Chrome because it consumes a lot of memory. And um, yeah, I'm not the first developer to complain about it. So let's try to test within Chrome and see where things will work perfectly so we expand yeah so let's pick value Inspect. and I'm trying to go to network we're actually getting the same issue failed read response data because this request was redirected Response no content available for this request. No content available. Let's see what we are sending. As our payload, let's see our payload. Oh, looks like we don't have anything in our payload. Okay, so let me go to the validator and try to say um, what we are trying to input is a file because I don't remember inputting that. 
so we save it is a file with a mime csv a file of mimes a file of mime csv So let's try again and see if that works. Let's try a clear patch. So it's refresh. And clear and import. Let's see what it says. Oh, we are actually still getting the same thing. Um, let's first comment out. Um, we are going to actually comment out the try and catch and see where the real problem is. So let's test again. Okay, fresh. So let's put okay. So now we are going to see the error. It's actually telling us um invalid incorrect integer value with a selling price column so it is actually copying on a selling price it looks like there is an error with a selling price um you see selling price Oh, a true one. So it is trying to import the first row. Okay, we have to ignore the first row. How to do that? Let's go and um, let's go back to the documentation. The documentation after the research I've made, it actually says um, we configure and ignore the first column from the research. And um, this is what you do. So config uh, set ignore header line true. So let's try and save again and try to import. Just try to refresh without a product. So let's try again. What is submit? So as you can see here, we are actually getting a 200. So that means it has worked properly. Let's hit our database to see if our files have been imported. Add data. So this is our database.
and let me check the table records yep as you can see we have all this information Yep, um, so it has worked now. Um, our next episode is going to be about integrating this with the VJS. Since this has worked, we can now import it into the database. So now I'm going to provide an example with VJS and Composition API so that we can complete the whole package. Thank you. Subscribe and um, let's drop a comment if you have. This is not the best practice, but yeah, this is how I've actually done it in um, my way. You can advise.